Investorideas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Investorideas.com podcast, looking at cannabis news to watch as well as insights from thought leaders and experts. In today's podcast, we look at announcements from Fire and Flower Holdings Corporation trading on the TSX Venture as FAF, Neptune Wellness Solutions Incorporated trading on the NASDAQ and TSX as NEPT, Hill Street Beverage Company Incorporated trading on the TSX Venture as Beer, and Cureleaf Holdings Incorporated trading on the CSC as Cura and the OTCQX as CURLF, as well as Avicana Incorporated trading on the TSX as AVCM. So first looking at Fire and Flower Holdings Corporation, who announced today that's entered into a subscription agreement with respect to a strategic investment by an indirect wholly owned subsidiary of Ailmont Cooch Chard Incorporated, which trades on the TSX as AD, ATD.A and ATD.B. Uh, the company is also pleased to announce that it has received conditional approval to post its common shares for trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So the subscription agreement allows for Cooch Chard to obtain a controlling interest in the company with an aggregate investment of more than 380,000, sorry, 380 million of growth capital for Fire and Flower Global's expansion. Fire and Flower has demonstrated that it's capable of rapidly scaling its retail platform through a best-in-class store concept, a leading digital platform, and a focus on the safe, responsible, and lawful sale of cannabis. This investment will provide Fire and Flower with additional funds to support the further development of its proprietary High Fire digital retail platform and expansion of its retail store network across Canada and internationally where legally permitted. Concurrent with the closing of this transaction, the company will uplist on the TSX. So this strategic investment by Kustard, one of the world's largest retailers, is transformative for Fire & Flower. The retail cannabis platform we developed marries a best-in-class in-store experience with our proprietary high fire digital infrastructure, and this is a huge vote of confidence in the platform, shared Trevor Fencott, Fire & Flower's Chief Executive Officer. The support of Kustard's world-class leadership team, coupled with their impressive international footprint, which includes major markets such as the U.S., Mexico, and Europe, provide us with the outstanding opportunities for, for aggressive growth. Uh, so Ailmount Kustard has been getting into the cannabis space for a little while now, doing a lot of deals mainly with the CBD market in the U.S., uh, but now they're obviously doing this large-scale retail partnership with Fire and Flower Holdings Corporation, who I've mentioned a bunch of times, including yesterday, who has been expanding their retail footprint. Uh, they just recently got their newest license in the Yukon. This will be a big development for them as far as putting them ahead of the other retail companies that they're against. Again, the Chum Holdings Incorporated, as well as National Assets Cannabis Corporation, just to name a few. Uh, but this means in the long term that they're probably going to be able to jump ahead of that and expand their retail footprint quite quickly, again, with that $380 million of growth capital. So next, look at Neptune Wellness Solutions Incorporated who has completed the acquisition of the assets of Sugarleaf Labs LLC and Forest Remedies LLC, and the acquisition was first announced on May 9th, which again I've mentioned a couple times. So the acquisition of Sugarleaf combined with Neptune allows us to create a leading North American extraction platform with significant capacity available to serve our customers on both sides of the border. Furthermore, considering the significant growth anticipated in this hemp-based products, this acquisition provides Neptune with capabilities to satisfy a word array of clients. And finally, we anticipate a significant contribution from this acquisition, as indicated by the large errant structure providing adequate risk sharing, said Michael Carmada, Neptune President and CEO. Uh, so I did mention the Neptune Solutions acquisition that they were looking at over the last month. Um, finally completed now, and it really does give them the access to both the U.S. market uh, with the hemp and extraction platforms coming through Sugar Leaf and Forest Remedies, as well as having their own extraction platforms based in Canada. Again, extraction has been a huge element lately based on the fact that, again, there's going to be that derivatives markets coming online in Canada in the coming months. And we also expect some changes throughout the U.S. with states regarding their allowance of certain derivative products from cannabis uh, in the coming election as well. Next, look at Hill Street Beverage Company Incorporated and Lex Area Bioscience Corporation, which trades on the OTCQX as LXRP and the CSC as LXX, who announced today a multifaceted expansion of their relationship. So Hill Street and Lex Area have entered into a joint manufacturing partnership, valid for 10 years to produce dehydrotech trademark commercial products under a new brand to be announced, including both processed THC and CBD powders in the form of compressed tablets, capsules, or sachets for new consumer products for sale in Canada and for export where permittable. <clears throat> These new products could allow consumers to infuse any beverage with cannabis without affecting the taste, smell, or the physical attributes. And the joint manufacturing partnership 
We'll also produce similar powders to use an ingredient for licensed producers in Canada seeking to use Luxaria's advanced infusion technologies in beverages, edibles, and topicals. So the manufacturing will be done at Hill Street's recently announced One Leaf Cannabis Cultivation and Processing Facility in Regina, Saskatchewan, subject to closing of the One Leaf acquisition and its licensing by Health Canada. And Hill Street will own and manage all aspects of the manufacturing business under Lexaria's own license and patents for Dehydratech and its related processes. So both companies anticipate greatly enhanced cash flows from the JMP. And for Lexaria in particular, the JMP marks its first opportunity to more directly benefit from the emerging federal legal cannabis edibles industry in Canada. In addition to the manufacturing project, uh, Hill Street has also acquired a global semi-exclusive license, with minor exceptions, to utilize Luxaria's Dehydratech trademark THC beverage infusion technology and a global non-exclusive license to utilize Luxaria's Dehydratech CBD beverage infusion technology around the world, valid for 10 years. So this expands the July 31st license award to Hill Street to use Dehydratech for the THC beverage formulation in Canada only and positions Hill Street as the only company in the world to have earned a license to use Dehydratech globally. The license royalties for the use of Dehydratech will be activated as Hill Street enters national markets that have legally allowed the sales of products using Lexarius technology. So Hill Street's chairman and CEO Terry Donnelly declared, when we first began our relationship with Lexaria, it was based on a comprehensive competitive review of the market with a single uncompromising vision to find a technology partner who could provide water soluble cannabis with zero impact on the award winning taste and aroma of our products. Lexaria has proven themselves time and again to be the ideal infusion platform for our products and to be committed to continuous improvement and innovation and to deliver the best consumer experience. This partnership takes our relationship to a whole new level, which we believe will help set a global standard for excellence that consumers are looking for in cannabis edibles and beverages. Our manufacturing partnership will make this technology available to LPs interested in producing world-class edibles, ensuring our industry is able to provide consumers broad-based access to this incredible technology in nearly any product format. <clears throat> so Hill Street Beverage Company has been focusing on really the beverage market coming up in October and then again we'll actually expect products on the market either late December or early January and they've been had granted that access to the Dehydratech technology but now they have that globally for both CBD and THC as opposed to just THC in Canada which will impact their capabilities for the long term and the other sort of interesting development is the fact that they are making those basically capsule or physical products that you can just chuck into any beverage and allow it to be cannabis infused. Um, that technology we've already seen in a few different companies in the US. We're not seeing that as much in Canada so far. People are looking to actually make the infused beverages fully complete versus adding a product to a beverage. But the fact that they're allowing that as well and there will be that option means that there's going to be a broader spectrum of beverages available than we normally would anticipate. Next looking at Curly Holdings Incorporated who announced the opening of its 25th Florida dispensary as the company continues to expand rapidly throughout the state. So Cureleaf has currently the largest cannabis dispensary footprint in the U.S. with 48 dispensaries across the country. In opening our third Orlando area medical marijuana dispensary, we're proud to be able to provide patients in the communities of Sanford, Lake Mary, Lake Monroe, Longwood, Winter Springs, and Midway, Florida with access to Cureleaf's premium quality products and educational resources. This is to share Jod Lasardi, Cureleaf CEO. Uh, Cureleaf is commemorating the grand opening of Sanford's first medical marijuana dispensary by providing a sneak preview to its newest product, Cureleaf Shatter, at the dispensary. Uh, processed using the industry's cleanest, most medically precise extraction and purification methods combined with decades of horticultural experience, Cureleaf Shatter offers patients with qualifying medical conditions a new product option that physicians may consider for their patients. And Cureleaf Medical Cannabis products are also available in forms of capsules, oils, distillates, concentrates, vaporizer pens, pre-rolls, smokable flour, and topical creams. Uh, so Cureleaf advancing their Florida footprint, and they are a company that has expanded as far as a multi-state operator. Um, similar to how there's a bunch of Canadian retail operations trying to look at having a large dispensary footprint throughout Canada. The same thing is happening in the U.S., although it's much more difficult to navigate in the U.S. due to the state-by-state -state regulations. Florida specifically still pretty behind the terms. As far as their medical marijuana regulations, they are only focused on the medical market right now. And again, that could be changing in the next election or their next vote. Lastly, we look at Avicana Incorporated, a biopharmaceutical company focused on the development of manufacturing and commercialization of plant-based cannabinoid-based products who announced the commencement of a phase one clinical trials on three of its Dermacosmetic products. 
So KMED, which is a uh, Colombian medical association, has commenced clinical studies on Avicana's Pure Earth trademark dermacosmetics products in order to demonstrate their effectiveness with specific cosmetic endpoints, such as the reduction of lines associated with aging, efficacy as a moisturizer for eczema-prone skin, and reduction of serpent and redness attributed to acne. So, in connection with such clinical studies, KMED is currently in the process of recruitment for the company's intensive conditioner trial for eczema-prone skin and expects recruitment for the clear skin and regenerative serum trials to begin in August, with a total of 54 patients expected to be recruited per trial. Uh, the studies are being completed in Colombia, and the results are expected to be available prior to the commercial launch during the fourth quarter of 2019. And additionally, the company is unaware of any other trials. Uh, you can look at clinicaltrials.gov involving cannabinoids in Colombia or on a derma cosmetics containing cannabinoids in the world. <clears throat> at KMED, we're very excited and proud of the leading medical cannabis clinical research with Avicannus Dermatology and cosmetic products. The studies have been designed and are being developed with the highest standards in order to build strong evidence in this new challenging healthcare opportunity, said Humberto Reñales, Executive Director of KMED. Uh, so, Avicana focusing on the dermatology aspect of the cannabis market. They're not the only company that's doing that. And even in the Latin American market, one of the main ones who has Chiron Life Sciences already has a Kawita brand of dermatology products that's available in the Latin American community. I don't know specifically what trials they've done in Colombia, but they are based in the Latin American community. And there's a few other companies that are based in that community that are focusing again more on the skin care aspect as that's a huge market apparently in the Latin American community. And one of the biggest things that's being focused on as far as what's regulated and allowed in most Latin American companies and countries, including Colombia. And that will also be even an element in Mexico where they're seeing a few different products being focused there on their skincare product line. Uh, so something that is apparently developing massively in Latin America is again, the focus on dermatological products used with some sort of cannabinoid based uh, product in it. So that's all for today's podcast. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated ZM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.